Thank you, Professor. Uh, good morning and good afternoon to everyone present here. Uh, just a quick question. Can you guys see my screen? Uh, uh, anyone? Yes, everything's okay. fine. Okay, brilliant. All right, so um, I'm gonna be presenting. Uh, so my topic for my presentation is uh, controller hardware and loop testing um, of microbit secondary frequency control schemes. Um, <clears throat> so let me just straight jump into the outline. Uh, I think we all know the notion of microgrids uh, so far, so I'm gonna skip that part and I'm gonna talk about the secondary frequency control problem. But before defining that problem, I'm gonna describe the model that we have adopted. Um, then uh, to implement that control, uh, there are uh, two architectural solutions that we have considered, uh, the centralized scheme and the distributed scheme. Um, so I'm gonna talk about that. And then uh, we implement those two schemes on our controller hardware and loop test bed. Uh, and then we try to uh, compare these two schemes um, by, uh, by looking at two performance metrics. And then I'm gonna try and conclude and uh, leave you guys with some, uh, some ideas. Um, all right, so uh, I think uh, I'm gonna skip the microgrid notion part. I mean, we all know it's a, a small uh, power system, uh, low voltage network, so I'm gonna skip that part. But just for the sake of uh, this discussion, for the scope of my paper <clears throat> or our paper, um, secondary frequency control problem uh, that I'm gonna be describing here uh, is gonna be uh, for islanded microgrids um, with inverter-based DERs and loads. Um, so just a few assumptions here. I mean, I do list down a lot of them here, but uh, just a few uh, would be, the few key ones are that the phases are balanced. So it's a uh, balanced sinusoidal three-phase regime, uh, short lossless lines. And as I said earlier, that the ERs and loads are interface uh, via voltage source inverters. The last um, important assumption that I wanna leave you guys with is uh, that the voltage droops are um, considered to be much faster. Uh, the voltage controller dynamics are uh, considered to be the fastest here. And uh, given that we use base voltages um, as the voltage reference values, uh, the voltages in this particular problem would be considered to be one per unit. All right. So in terms of the microgrid model, there are two types of buses in this, um, in this islanded AC microgrid that we are gonna consider. Uh, the first one would be the inverter-based um, TER buses, and then the other one would be the load buses. Uh, so for the inverter-based buses, uh, what I'm showing you is a very reduced order uh, model of a droop controlled uh, um, DER. Um, so here what I show you is a first order uh, equation uh, for the local frequency update. And that update is based on the mismatch between the set point of that DER uh, and the power withdrawn from the bus uh, where that DER is connected. DI is, is the frequency control group coefficient. Uh, theta would be the phase angle in reference frequency coordinate frame. Uh, so that's that. In terms of the load bus, a similar first order uh, equation is used. Uh, keep in mind that this load bus um, also has a load which is interfaced by an inverter. So again, the mismatch is just uh, between the load set points or whatever the load profile is at that time and the power withdrawn from that bus uh, or drawn from that bus and then the local frequency is being updated using this first order uh, equation. Um, delta LIT are the perturbations that will happen over time. LI zero is, um, LI superscript zero is just the base load that we start uh, this problem with. So in terms of the secondary frequency control problem, so for the, for the microgrid that I described using uh, equation one and two, as the load perturbations happen over time, what we, wanna, uh, what we want to do is we want to regulate each of the set points of the DERs. Uh, so UIT, uh, I being uh, in the DER set, uh, around some operating points, uh, such that the local frequencies goes to zero as, as, we, as, as time evolves. So, um, and then we define the average frequency error. And when I say average frequency error, um, think of in bulk grid, think of area control error. So um, uh, in, in, that, in that sense, average frequency error is, uh, is defined as the weighted, uh, weighted 
average of the local frequencies. So uh, it's just a di d theta i dt divided by the summation of uh, di's. Uh, and if you um, put equation one and two, the average frequency error expression simplifies and it, then it just becomes um, the difference between the set points for the generators uh, and, and, the set, and the set points for the loads. So in terms of the frequency control scheme, uh, the objective is to implement a controller to now drive that expression for average frequency error to zero as time evolves. Uh, to implement that scheme, we obviously uh, discretize the time uh, into rounds and uh, we make this assumption uh, that between two rounds or the time between two rounds, TR and TR plus one, that during that time, um, the set points uh, UIT is considered to be um, we, we hold that set point and uh, we call it UIR and that allows us to discretize that previous equation. Uh, so what you're seeing in five is just the discretized version of that, of that equation that I showed you previously. In terms of the architectural solution, so remember, uh, we have an expression for average frequency error. What we want to do is now drive that frequency error to zero as time evolves. Um, given perturbations and loads are uh, taking place or smaller perturbations that uh, whatever are taking place. In terms of architectural solutions, there are two that we consider centralized and distributed. In a centralized solution, uh, in a centralized framework, we want a single node to poll for these set points, the generator and the load set points, and then use those set points to compute that frequency error. Um, and then uh, use that frequency error to pass it through uh, some sort of a controller to drive it to zero. In a distributed decision-making approach, uh, we would not depend on that kind of a global knowledge. Um, and in addition, uh, one of the key differences between centralized and distributed in theory is that centralized uh, architectures are, uh, <clears throat> um, are susceptible to single point of failures. Uh, whereas in theory or in principle, uh, we would like that the distributed architectures are not um, uh, susceptible to those kind of failures. And the hope is that let's say if one of the control nodes that is uh, controlling a local asset fails, the other <clears throat> local nodes can come and help out and still ensure that the reliability of electricity supply is maintained. So moving on, in terms of the centralized frequency control scheme, um, like I said, the central centralized node uh, pulls for those set points, computes the frequency error, and then passes this frequency error through a prop proportional integral PI, PI based control. Uh, and um, you can see from equation six and seven, and details are in the paper, uh, that the individual set points of the ERs are updated um, and as perturbations keep happening, we hope is that the frequency error goes to zero as long as the gains are chosen appropriately. In a distributed uh, scheme, uh, in, this, in this setting, uh, the PI control remains the same. So the, you, can, you can have that PI control sitting on, a, on the local controller, the control node that is uh, controlling the DER in the microgrid. But that global knowledge of what the frequency error is, uh, that, that has to be computed in a distributed fashion. So um, to, that, uh, to that end, what we do is we, we think of a microgrid being endowed with uh, multiple geographically dispersed control nodes. And these control nodes are gonna take the local uh, information, example, I mean, from the measurements uh, that they have, or if they exchange some information from their neighbors and they input this, uh, this information to a distributed algorithm called the ratio consensus algorithm to compute this global variable, which is the average frequency error. Um, I wish I had uh, a lot of time to go over ratio consensus algorithm, but I mean, it's, it's uh, uh, well uh, formulated and uh, has been described in the literature quite a bit. So uh, in a very general way, um, each, each distributed control node maintains two states. And if initialized correctly, the ratio of those two states after a finite number of iterations uh, converges to the ratio of uh, the summation of initial values. So I'm going to, I'm going to use this concept and I'm going to initialize um, for, for my distribution uh, distributed framework. I'm going to initialize my uh, numerator state uh, with UIRs, which is the set point for DERs. Uh, if, if the, uh, if the node is a DER control node and if it's a load control node, I initialize it with the, uh, the load set points. 
and the denominator state, the z, uh, I'm going to initialize it with the droop control coefficients. So after a finite uh, number of iterations, the hope is that each local node, based on uh, their own information and the information that they receive from their neighbors, after a finite number of iterations, they converge to the uh, to the uh, summation of the initial, the ratio of the summation of the initial values or initial values of the states. And uh, with that respect, you would see that, okay, so after a few iterations, each node will learn the value of the frequency error. Also in the paper, I described um, a failure adaptive uh, protocol as well, but I don't wanna go into the details right now. It, it's very well written. It's a very simple uh, scheme. So uh, please do check out. Uh, that would allow us uh, that would allow the distributed framework to still operate uh, when, say, a node or two fails. So in terms of the testbed, uh, we use a, a real-time emulator uh, by this company called Typhoon. Um, so the microgrid would be modeled in that real-time uh, emulator. And then for the centralized control node, we use uh, the compact trio device from National Instruments. So it's gonna pull the information, compute the frequency error, and then uh, pass it to the PI controls. And that's how the DERs would adjust set points under perturbations. In a distributed setting, we still use the Typhoon Hill real-time emulator to model a microgrid. Um, but instead of a single control node, I mean, in this, in this setting, we use six Arduino DUE microcontrollers. Um, they are also outfitted with an Ethernet shield so that they can communicate uh, with Typhoon via Modbus uh, communication. And they also have uh, XP wireless modules to communicate among themselves to exchange information. Uh, and obviously Arduino has the distributed algorithm implemented on it uh, so as to uh, learn that global variable. Uh, in terms of the testing, um, uh, we use two key performance metrics. One is the response time and uh, the other is resiliency. Um, and uh, uh, there are some initial set points, like I said, for the loads and uh, the generators. Uh, all the three loads sum up to 3.3 per unit and uh, the, the generators also sum up to 3.3 per unit. That's at the start of the simulation. Um, these are the frequency control group coefficients. Uh, and what we do is we run a 150 second long um, <clears throat> simulation with uh, these perturbations happening at different timestamps. So at 30 second load six changes, it, it goes up. At 60 second mark, uh, the microgrid loses a DER. And at 120 second mark, the microgrid loses a, a load. So these are some perturbations that are happening in the profile. Uh, we're going we're gonna to check the response time of both the schemes. But for testing resiliency, in addition to these perturbations, we also unplug these the compact trio device for the centralized scheme at 80 second mark uh, to in some ways to mimic the failure and um, in case of distributed setting we unplug two of the control nodes one at 80 second the other at 100 second mark so <clears throat> in terms of the response time uh, it's it's fairly clear that the uh, centralized control node is gonna pull the information from the der and load buses pretty quick is going to compute the average frequency error and then pass it to PI control. And you see that, well, quote unquote, instantaneously, um, the frequency error is, uh, is taken back to zero. Or if I try to bring it back to a hertz scale, then it's, it, the frequency goes back to 60 hertz. So at, at 30 second, at 60 second, um, and when the load was increasing or we were losing a generator or the load was, uh, or we were losing a load, so all that was done, but in case of distributed scheme, um, it still does the job, but it takes uh, a lot more time. Um, it, I mean, in this case, it took about 11 seconds. Um, and these are the inverter update, inverter set point updates for the three inverters in the six bus uh, islanded AC microgrid that we have considered. Um, so at, at 60 second mark, uh, as I told you, we uh, the microgrid loses uh, an inverter, so we don't have information, the control nodes don't have information for that. Um, and so these are the updates for the centralized scheme and this is the update for the distributed scheme. In terms of resiliency, um, the profile is the same, but I said that we unplug the serial device, the compact trio device at 80 second mark here. So after that, any, per any perturbation that takes place, the, uh, the centralized node is not able to fix the frequency error. Whereas in case of uh, the distributed setting, we take out a node at 80 second mark, a node at 100 second mark, 
And when the perturbation happens at one twenty second mark, which is when we lose our load, it does take more time, but it's able to uh, bring that frequency back to 60 Hertz because of that failure adaptive protocol. Um, and these are the updates on the inverter set points. So in conclusion, I mean, it's fairly clear that the response time of a centralized uh, uh, scheme is better than the distributed one. Um, in terms of resiliency, the distributed scheme uh, outperforms the centralized scheme. Um, the problem with the distributed scheme was the response time, but I think that can be improved. And in fact, we are working on that end. Uh, we could also explore a few other uh, performance uh, metrics, but uh, for the scope of this paper, we only considered uh, resiliency and response time, but yeah, the cost and reliability and scalability are other performance metrics to be explored. And the hope is that this setup is, uh, uh, can motivate research in uh, comparing and benchmarking uh, centralized distributed uh, schemes for microgrid control. Um, there's also decentralized schemes. So, I mean, the hope is that this acts as some sort of um, motivation to future research. So thank you. Uh, and uh, I'd be happy to take some questions. Yeah, thank you very much, Siddhartha, for your presentation. It was really deeply into control theory. <laughs> um, are there some questions? Uh, please hands up or write a question in uh, Q&A. Is there an urgent question? I don't see any hands up. Um, are there questions? Um, I have a short one. Maybe you can answer it shortly, uh, Siddhartha. Can you give me a short explanation, definition for what do you understand uh, under resiliency? Um, okay, so that's a that's a pretty good question and probably a short answer uh, might not do justice to the question because I I've seen uh, resilient control uh, coming in control theory. Uh, maybe in terms of adaptive control at times. And so it has been addressed from a lot of different ways. Uh, for the sake of power systems, I would imagine if the, if, the, if the system has the capability to bounce back or come back um, or fight back if there is some sort of uh, a failure or to some degree, uh, then the system can be characterized as a resilient one. Now, obviously, we are all engineers here, so it has to be quantified, and that's, yeah. uh, I, okay. I, I don't know. Sorry yeah. about that. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Yeah, we are at the end of the session. Um, it was a very, uh, there is coming a question, a uh, great talk. Um, do you see it, Siddhartha? The, um, yes, I do, I do. There, um, there are two questions from, uh, from Matt <laughs> and from Kostas. Maybe we okay. have, um, Small time to answer this, please. Okay. Um, all right. So the question from Mads is, uh, I know it is distributed architecture. How do the methods scale as number of DERs grows? Um, so actually, we did submit a paper um, to general meeting. Um, and that's where we address that issue, where we try to, instead of looking at all the buses, we only look at DER buses. And um, it, think about um, a small low voltage uh, network or a feeder. I mean, you can cluster DERs. Um, at the end of the day, you can assign few key buses and uh, which have generation uh, capabilities and use five, 10 buses uh, to, to address this frequency control problem. Secondly, um, with better communication, obviously this was a hardware in loop testing. So we used Modbus communication and we were using wireless communication. Now Modbus is fine, but wireless may not be feasible as uh, scalability increases. Um, but if you are going for say um, a remote area microgrid or uh, some sort of an army based microgrid uh, where uh, the mission is critical uh, as they call it here, uh, then in that case, you would probably explore options for uh, optic fiber and stuff like that. So it can be tackled. Obviously it's gonna cost more money. Um, the other question is uh, why you call this secondary frequency regulation? Okay, so uh, let me answer the first part. 
Um, so, uh, in one of the previous presentations in this session, we talked about the hierarchical uh, control. So, there was a primary control, which is just to uh, do the group control. Um, <clears throat> and then the group control is just uh, used for making sure that there is uh, power sharing uh, in, uh, in a proportional manner among all the DERs. But then it does leave a DER, um, uh, it does leave a steady state error. To fix that steady state error, uh, it is, uh, we, we call it the secondary layer. It works sort of slower than the primary layer. So that's why it's called the secondary frequency control. I mean, uh, like I said, think about area control error in bulk power systems. And then obviously there's the tertiary control, which does the optimal um, <clears throat> control. It gives you the optimal set points, the U stars in my presentation. Um, also the angle user state variable implies a grid forming. That is correct. It's an island in microgrid. It's a grid forming uh, in, uh, inverter. Maybe I should have made it clear. I'm sorry about that. Uh, and then there is, what do you define as a resilient system based on your control output? Uh, I think that I think that question has been uh, sort of addressed when I was trying to answer in a qualitative sense, maybe not in a quantitative sense. Uh, that, I mean, as long as uh, from a cyber layer point of view or from a control layer point of view, if the nodes fail, um, then, um, then can the system still ensure some level of operation? So in that sense, I mean, that's the resilient system. Um, yeah, I don't see any other questions, so. Uh, uh. Yeah, thank you very much for answering um, the, the, the question.